Well, I appreciate there's a vocal minority making a lot of noise about concerns uh, that some people uh, have. What I would say is we've got the country's biggest ever scrappage scheme that I've uh, uh, unveiled, uh, more than £171 million. Pounds. I announced £100 million pounds two weeks ago. And that will be supporting those low-income families, those sole traders, those small businesses, those charities who may have a polluting vehicle but need help to, to transition across. I'd make this point is that there's lots of misinformation out there. Uh, because of our policies, now more than 94% of uh, households in London who have a car have compliant cars. Those in outer London, it's more than 85%. So check the TFL website to see if your vehicle is compliant. It's more likely than not to be uh, compliant. But over the course of the next uh, few months, there's help for you to make the transition to a cleaner vehicle or to decide if you want to, uh, to have more use of public transport, walking or cycling. But I recognise. Uh, concerns families have and businesses have during a cost of living crisis. That's why, without a penny of support from the government, uh, we've uh, you know uh, released more than 171 million pounds to support people with a scrappage scheme. Uh, 61 million pounds has already been used up. 110 million pounds I announced a couple of weeks ago. Uh, that money is there to support those people who uh, are struggling, who want to make the trans transition. But it's the poorest Londoners, least likely to own a car who suffered the worst consequences from in ill health. Almost half of households in London don't own a, a car. It's an issue of social justice, but also it's an issue of racial justice because a disproportionate number of black Asian minority ethnic Londoners who don't own a car suffer the consequences. And that's why this policy is designed to improve the air in London, but also address the additional challenges of climate change and congestion. It's really important to recognise uh, that actually the evidence is unequivocal. Nobody can argue with the research from the Imperial College uh, nobody can argue with the children that I've visited at Great Ormond Street suffering ill health because of the bad air or at the Children's Evelina uh, Hospital. You speak to the uh, Chief Medical Officer, he will talk about the consequences and concerns of uh, air quality. Uh, there were those people who didn't want to take action to ban smoking in public spaces. There were those people who didn't want to take action in the 1950s to take action to prevent the great smog. I want to be on the right side of history taking action rather than on the wrong side. The costs of inaction far away the costs of action. But I'm quite clear that this plan addresses the triple challenges of uh, air quality, climate change and uh, congestion. Uh, Delayed for me means more people suffering the consequences of ill health. What is a price? For a, children's, for a child's life? What is a price for around 4,000 premature deaths a year? What is a price for a mum doing CPR on a child uh, because of uh, uh, her not being able to breathe because of uh, a consequence of uh, air quality and having to bring that child back to uh, life? I think delay leads to more, more ill health, more suffering. Well, look, Johnson was the uh, mayor uh, who took no action uh, 10 years ago when he was given a report that showed that there were more than 400 schools in areas where the air was unlawful, some of the poorest parts of the country hid that report away. He was also the mayor who knew about nine-year-old Ella 10 years ago losing her life and took uh, no action. He's also the mayor uh, that when he became the prime minister, he uh, penalised uh, London when it came to the deal, the DFTD with TfL. So we'll take no lectures from uh, a prime minister, uh, a former prime minister and a former mayor who ignored the science and ignored the facts.